Let's just see now the pairwise products of Pauli matrices. There will be how many couples all together? We have four matrices. Uh, all possible coupling will be how many? How many coupling? It's seven, uh, three by four by half. It's six coupling, right? Mm, is it? Four by three. Yeah, it's six coupling. Uh, all the couplings where sigma naught is present, they are very simple because sigma naught is the identity matrix. When you multiply everything by the identity matrix, it becomes the same matrix. So when you, when you couple sigma naught with sigma j, so it will be sim simply sigma j. When you take the trace of such a product, uh, look at this trace of sigma 1 is 0 because elements are 0. Trace of sigma 2 is 0. Trace of sigma 3 is 0 as well. Uh, now, if I couple sigma 1 and sigma 2, I claim it will be negative 5 sigma 3. If you multiply these two, it will be this matrix with the extra negative 5 factor. Let's just see that. This row by this column, it's negative 5. This row by this column, 0. This row by this column is 0. And the last row and the last column is i. It's, sim it's exactly the i negative 5 times sigma 3 matrix. Another verification, if you multiply sigma 2 and sigma 3, it's negative i times sigma 1. Let's just, let's just try that. Uh, this row and this one is i. This row and this row is, is i again. The other two combinations are 0. So what do we see from that? We see from that if I take the inner product of my poly matrices, With the different indices, so if they disjoint, that will be zero, because all of the com all of the possible combination of couplings are here. All of all, all of them uh, six uh, all of the six com I said six combinations. Do I see six combinations here? We have three here, and two here. We have only five. Where's the sixth one? Oh, actually, I missed one. I missed the coupling sigma 1 and sigma 3 coupling. How come I missed that in my typing? Actually, uh, I, was, I was correct when I said we rest, there are six possible couplings between the four matrices. I mean, six possible distinct coupling, coupling between four matrices. Uh, five of them are listed here. Four couplings list, uh, three couplings listed here. Two of them listed, so five. There's a fifth, a sixth one, which I overlooked. That's the sigma 1 with sigma 3. Let's just, let's just write this here. If I couple... Sigma 1, sorry, sigma 1 with the sigma 3, what that will be? I claim it will be, uh, what do I claim? Let's just see what that will be. Sigma 1 and sigma 3. First row, first column, 0. First row, second column, negative i. Last row, first column, 1. Uh, sorry, I said negative i, negative 1. I'm, I'm supposed to say negative 1. Uh, this row and this column is 1, and the last row and last column is 0. So it's uh, this matrix times times i, isn't it? Sigma 2. That's the coupling. Let's just double check again. Uh, this row and this row, it's uh, negative 1. If I multiply this by i, it will be negative 1. That's right. That's, that's the last missing coupling, and that's how it goes. Now we, you have all six coupling, and if you take trace of each of this coupling, it will be sum of the elements on the diagonal. Every time it's simply zero. That's why you have this second condition, or in fact condition A, in my definition of the orthonormal system, is satisfied. So you may think, you may think of these poly matrices, and actually that's a very effective way of doing with them, uh, of doing some things, well, lots of important things with the Pauli matrices, that this system of matrices, they like the orthonormal system, but within the realm of matrices. If you replace the dot product with this new inner product. And so what I claim now is this. If I have a matrix, which happens to be a linear combination of my Pauli matrices, if happens like so, I can recover each of these coefficients now. I can recover each of this. I no longer need to solve any system again. I can recover this again via this inner product trick. The same trick we'll learn on the second slide today. So if I want to recover these coefficients, all I have to do, I have to take the inner products of my matrix A with each individual Pauli matrix. 
For instance, if I take A with the, with the sigma naught, if I do all of these linear expansions like this, so if I replace my A with a linear combination, if I do the expansion, all of these angled brackets, they will vanish except for the first one, which makes it 1 here. And so the whole expansion will be sim simply lambda 0. It's the same idea I presented to you on the second slide when we discussed with the orth normal systems. If I want to discuss, if I wanted to extract the lambda 1 coefficient, I have to couple it with the sigma 1, and that will be lambda 1. Coupling with the sigma 2 delivers lambda 2, and coupling with sigma 3 delivers lambda 3. If I now use the same trick I used for, or on, again on the slide number two, if I now assume that my matrix A is a zero matrix, then all of these couplings, all of these couplings, they will deliver zero values for my lambda coefficients. And that's enough evidence to conclude that Pauli matrices produce linearly, linearly independent system. Because the dimension is four, they also produce bases. So S is a linearly independent system, and so by implication, S is a basis. The time is up, but probably I will steal one minute from your, from your break just to show you computational part of the slide. Here's a matrix A with the components negative 4, 2, negative 1, negative 3. It will take no longer than a minute. If I'd like to know, if I'd like to know the coefficients, if I'd like to know these coefficients, which I need to put here in order to represent my A as a combination of Pauli matrices, all I need to do, I need to take these inner products of my A with each individual Pauli matrix, and that will deliver the coefficient. I did this when I was preparing this slide. I don't have time to take you through the computations. Here they are. Here's a lambda naught. Here's a lambda 1. Here's a lambda 2. And here's a lambda 3. You can easily double check that. If you take this coefficient, if you if, if you take this coefficients and if you put them in this representation together with the Pauli matrices, you will recover your matrix A. And so if I use my notations for the components of the or coordinates of the vector with respect to the given system of other vectors, I can say that the my matrix A with respect to the Pauli matrices has components like so. Any questions? <laughs>